That's in Decatur, Alabama. Mark understands the law as he is a principal in the law firm of Blackburn, Maloney, and Schubert. One of his specialties is representing large farming operations in the southeastern and midwestern United States. Mark has been active in many of Decatur's community activities. A Rotarian since 1980, serving as RI director, foundation trustee, and many other committees, leading him to being selected as Rotary International President for 2019-2020. Mark has an Illinois background growing up in the village of Ridgeway, known as the popcorn capital of Illinois. Mark and his wife Gay schedule to visit the Ridgeway every year, where he serves as king of the popcorn festival. Mark, I microwaved a bag of popcorn for you to welcome you to our Rotary District 6460. I can smell it all the way from here. We are pleased that you're able to join us. Let us give Mark a big Rotary welcome from Rotary District 6460. Welcome, Mark. Welcome, Thank Mark. you, Rod. Thank you very much, Rod. <clears throat> it's, and thank you, Ryan. As um, now, Rod, we gotta get one thing straight. Claims not to be the popcorn capital of Illinois, but the popcorn capital of the world. Now we can't prove that at all, but that's what we claim. And Ryan, in his lead-in, I thought Sherry was going to say something different. That Rod suggested we go get some high-level speakers, but then we settled for Mark Maloney. But he didn't. He was very kind, and. Uh, so Governor Mark, where's Governor Mark? He needs to turn his microphone on and say hello so I can see him on my screen here. Hi, President Mark, how are you today? Welcome to District 6460. Great to see you, love the shirt. Right. I didn't know this was Aloha attire this evening, so. Uh, just a few of us. Okay, I, uh, if, if I know in advance, I try to, to have some Aloha attire. Anyway, it's great to be with fellow Illinoisans. I did, uh, I was born in El Dorado and raised in Gallatin County, Illinois, down in deep Southern Illinois. And my family still farms there in Gallatin County and White Counties, and then over across the river in Kentucky. <clears throat> so it's great to be with a lot of fellow Illinoisans. And I see some, at least here on the page one, there's four pages of faces here, but I see some familiar faces as I, as I look through, and it's great to see you all. You know, um, we certainly didn't expect to end this Rotary year with a bunch of Zoom meetings. Uh, you know, today uh, I wasn't expecting to be in Decatur, Alabama for the 65th day in a row. I was expecting to be on the way to New York to attend our, father, our daughter's graduation from medical school and then to leave from there tomorrow evening to head to Germany for a trip that would take us around the world ending in which we would stop in Honolulu, Hawaii for a wonderful Rotary convention. But life has changed. And you know the expression, when the world gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And even though this is not exactly the way we thought we would end this Rotary year, I have never been prouder to be a Rotarian than I am now. Rotarians have made the pivot. This meeting, this event is an example of how Rotarians have made the pivot. Clubs that were meeting in person and had never done anything other than meet in person made the switch, some of them quickly, some of them took a little while, and I think there's probably some clubs that have yet to make the pivot, but many, many clubs have made the pivot to meeting virtually. And I want to congratulate Governor Mark and all of the Rotarians of District 6460 
for making that pivot here with these uh, bi-weekly uh, virtual meetings. I think this is a great opportunity to bring the district together. And how many times did you get together like this when you weren't doing it on Zoom? I think you're seeing more of each other now than you probably were before. And, uh, but making that pivot shows that Rotarians can adapt, that we are innovative, that we are flexible, and I am so proud of Rotarians making that switch. And <clears throat> I would like to say though, that member engagement is the number one priority for Rotary at this time. And I hope it make, you make it your priority. There, you know, we talk about service projects. And when you think about service projects, I'm sure you think about doing things in the community or working on an international project in another part of the globe. But probably the most important service project that we can undertake at this time is to engage our fellow Rotarians. If your club is meeting, congratulations. I am so proud that you are meeting virtually and connecting with the Rotarians in your club. But take a look at that participant list that shows up on the right-hand side of your Zoom screen. And what names are missing from your club? What names don't make it to the virtual meeting? You need to reach out to those Rotarians and make sure that they realize that they are missed and how valuable they are to your Rotary Club. Maybe they can't, maybe they aren't participating because they don't understand the technology or are scared of the technology, but maybe it's because they're in a difficult situation and don't know how to move forward. By your reaching out to them, you can have a tremendous impact in their lives. And if your Rotary Club is participating in virtual meetings, but a neighboring club is not, reach out to that club, show them how it can be done, help them be mentors to them. Don't uh, try to make them feel bad, but show them how easy it can be to reach out to their members. I think one of the most critical things that faces us in the next couple of months is making sure that we are engaging the members of our clubs so yeah. that when we go back into something that is more normal, that they realize the value of their Rotary membership and that they will do everything that they can to maintain their membership in Rotary. I think that's very important. <clears throat> and, you know, it's been said, I've heard it said that Winston Churchill made this quote and, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure that it's actually true that he said it, but it's a great quote anyway, so I'm going to quote it. And if Winston said it, I'd give him credit. And if he didn't, well, too bad. But never waste a good crisis. And for sure, this is a good crisis. The coronavirus pandemic is a dark cloud over the entire world. But even this dark cloud, has a silver lining. And that silver lining is that it has forced many people to see how we can adjust and how flexible and innovative we can be. It's forced Rotarians to see that we can move, you know, we're not just this old crusty organization. We can adapt and we can change. And I think that's critical for the future of our organization. And I think it can be a great asset to us in attracting a younger demographic. When younger people realize that, well, maybe they don't have to go through the traditional club experience to perform service, they may be more interested in participating and being members 
of Rotary. So I think that that's, it's very important that we continue to innovate and to be flexible. And as we move back into more normal times, let's not discard what we've learned here at this time. You know, this pandemic is a watershed moment. The world will talk in terms of before the pandemic and after the pandemic. And I'm convinced that here in Rotary, we will do the same thing. And I think we need to carry a part of what we're doing now into our future operations. When you go back to in-person meetings, shouldn't those meetings be live streamed so that those who cannot participate in the meeting cannot be there in person, can participate anyway, or maybe call it up online later in the week. And I know for Rotary International, this is gonna change the way we function tremendously. Who would have ever thought that the board of directors of Rotary International could meet virtually? Well, we did it. For the last week of April, for three days, the board of directors of Rotary International met for 11 hours. And I sat and presided at those meetings right here from this very chair in the living room of my home in Decatur, Alabama. And those meetings, when you include the directors, the incoming directors, a few other observers, the staff that supports the various programs of Rotary, the technical staff that made sure that the meeting happened, as well as all of the interpreters, we had a total of 66 participants on that Zoom call. And those 66 participants were located in at least 19 countries. I went through and counted 19 countries. And we operated in seven languages. And we conducted the business of Rotary that way. And we'll be having a full board meeting the last full week of June once again. Um, so we need to carry some of those things into the future. And I think Rotary Clubs might even consider substituting a virtual meeting once a month or every now and then for their regular in-person meeting, <clears throat> particularly for those people in large cities where it's really so hard to fight against the traffic to get to a club meeting, having the opportunity to have a virtual meeting would I think be welcomed in many circumstances. But we're also making the shift with respect to our international convention. Of course, the toughest decision that I've ever had to make was canceling the convention in Honolulu. I was so looking forward to that. It was really going to be a wonderful event. But we had to model the appropriate public health behavior. And of course it came to the point, it <clears throat> ultimately came to the point after we made the decision that we had no choice. But it was a very difficult thing to do. So we are gonna bring some of the great programming that we had planned for the convention, and we're going to have Rotary's first ever virtual convention. Now I've had somebody tell me that, well, Mark, you know, back in San Antonio, there was some online features. Well, I'm sure that there were some online features before, but this is the first completely virtual convention. And so I ask you to save the dates of June 20 to 26. On Saturday and Sunday, June 20 and 21, we will have one general session each day. For those of us here in the central time zone, that will be at eight o'clock in the morning. And that session each day will last about 75 minutes, just a little over an hour. 
And then through the rest of the week, on June 22 through 26, Monday through Friday, we will have 15 featured breakout sessions, three sessions every day, one hour each. Each day, they will be at 8 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. And they'll be covering a wide array of topics. You know, the largest convention in Rotary history was in Osaka, Japan. And we had more than 45,000 Rotarians and family members attend that convention in 2004 under the leadership of past Rotary International President, Jonathan Majiagbi. And you know, it's only in Rotary would you have a Nigerian president presiding at a convention in Japan. But anyway, and I've, I want us to break that record. I want us to have the largest convention ever with a virtual audience from all over the world in the tens of thousands. Now, some people might say, oh, Mark, that's cheating because nobody has to leave their living room. Well, maybe so, but we've got to aspire to some goal here. And so I hope that you all will join us and let's have the biggest crowd ever for a Rotary International Convention. And as I've come up with the longest name ever for a convention. Now, more than ever, Rotary Connects the World, the 2020 Rotary Virtual Convention. For more information and details, be sure to check riconvention.org, where you would normally go to find convention information and the virtual convention information will be there. So, as I said earlier, I've never been prouder to be a Rotarian than I am now. I'm so grateful for what Rotarians are doing around the world, and I encourage Rotarians to continue and to focus on new member engagement. But perhaps I've talked long enough on my topics, and Ryan and Rod and Mark, whoever's in charge, or maybe none of you are in charge, <laughs> whoever, um, I'm, I'd be happy to answer questions if there are any. Yes, thank you very much for that, Mark. Uh, certainly a valuable message, and I'm sure we're all looking forward to the virtual convention. Uh, I have had a few questions submitted to me for you. And we'll go through those since we just wrapped up by talking about the virtual convention. The first one is from our past district governor, Suzanne Ellerbrock from the Rotary Club of Quincy. And Suzanne has asked if we know yet if any of the sessions from the virtual convention uh, will be saved for on-demand viewing after they are live streamed. All of the sessions will be saved for on-demand viewing. The general sessions and the 15 uh, breakout sessions will all be available for on-demand viewing because if you're living in Sydney, Australia, those timings are not going to work very well for you and you might want to wait till the next morning after you get up to go see what happened at the virtual convention. Very true. Uh, our next question comes to us from Tom Foley from the Rotary Club of Galesburg who identifies himself and these are his words uh, as a third generation Rotarian and still an avowed hippie, um, he says that Rotary's efforts to maintain world peace are his main reason for being a Rotarian and wants to know uh, how Rotary's efforts to promote world peace will continue through the world pandemic. Well, the, to the extent that the universities are open and continuing classes, our programs for the Rotary Peace Centers will continue. Now, I can't give you any update on the status of those universities and, and what their plans are, but we will certainly be continuing with the Rotary Peace Fellows program. We will all, you know, and of course, uh, peace and conflict resolution and prevention is one of our six areas of focus, 
And we will, the Rotary Foundation will be uh, making grants in the six areas of focus, including scholarship grants. And so if, if there's a scholarship, that program will still go forward and either with online instruction or in-person instruction. Uh, the, the Rotary Foundation just sent out information maybe yesterday or today that said that grants will continue and whether the education is online or in person, the grant will still be tenable and we will move forward. And so we will continue with those works. We'll continue with our partnership with the um, Institute for Economics and Peace, working on positive peace. And, you know, insofar as possible, we will continue to undertake all of our normal activities. A lot of them may be, but we will move forward. And we're all certainly glad to hear that. Uh, we've actually got some representation from our Rotary Youth programs on the call tonight. Uh, I saw earlier we've got Sabrina, one of our inbound Rotary Youth Exchange students from Venezuela, who is in Springfield, Illinois. Uh, and also joining us from Brazil is Zane Phillips, who is one of our outbound exchange students from Pike County, Illinois. Uh, and Zane had actually submitted a question and obviously, you know, you've been focused very much on the 19 to 20 rotary year, uh, but we're also headed into a new year here in about five weeks. And Zane had asked uh, if you're aware of any plans for Rotary's youth programs in the new year. With res well, with respect to youth exchange, um, the board will be considering a decision to suspend the program for the 2020 2021 year. That is not an announcement. No decision has been made, but that will be considered by the board sometime in June. And uh, there's a we may try to make a decision as quickly as possible, or it may be waiting until the June board meeting, but that will definitely be considered at that time. Of course, our other youth programs, <clears throat> Interact, RILA, the way that they can participate is going to be up to local Rotarians and local conditions. Uh, you know, I was just this morning, uh, I was on a call with a Rotary Club in uh, Western Australia. And, you know, they, they said that there they've had, you know, three new cases. And I don't know if they meant just in West Australia or the entire country of Australia, <clears throat> but West Australia is a pretty big place in and of itself. They'd only had three new cases of COVID-19 in the last couple of weeks. And so I think, you know, the, the way that different um, entities are going to be able, to, different areas are going to be able to work will vary from place to place. And so Interact and RILA and RILA programs may be able to continue. Uh, you know, here in Alabama, we're having high school graduations this week, uh, all outdoors. And uh, I actually saw that a cousin of mine uh, had a graduation there in El Dorado, Illinois, uh, within the last few days. Yes, yeah, certainly we will be working in District 6460 on our plans to uh, figure out what the new normal is for all of our programs, youth included. Um, and we are, I believe, wrapping up uh, the time that you were generous enough to be able to give us. So let's end on uh, one last question maybe, and this is probably a little bit more of a fun one. Uh, you mentioned earlier that you've been in Decatur for the last 65 days or so, and one of our Rotarians has asked you to share with us perhaps uh, your most fun memory from an international visit during your time as president of Rotary. Oh, gosh. Um, the most fun. Well, 
you know, one fun thing that I've enjoyed doing, which I have done in many places of the world, and I suppose it shows my age, is to lead the group in dancing the YMCA. Now, Zane probably doesn't even know anything about this, but I mean, you know, YMCA. Anyway, <clears throat> and um, I've done that in Zimbabwe. I've done it in Taipei. I've done it in Montevideo, Uruguay, and other places around the world. Uh, you know, when you post it on Facebook, some people think it's great, and some people think, what are you doing? You're just showing your age. So that was, that's, that's been a fun thing. But the greatest part has been meeting Rotarians around the world. And it was a disappointment for Gay and for me <clears throat> that, yes, we did it at Grand Rapids, Mara. We did do it at Grand Rapids. And um, one of the biggest disappointments was when on March 11th, we were in London. We were packing our suitcases to fly to Zurich the next day. And before we went to bed that night, our tickets had been changed for us to fly to Chicago and come home. And we were in Chicago for four days and then came home to Alabama on March the 16th. And we have been here ever since. Uh, I made my furth furthest trek away from Decatur today to go up for a doctor's appointment in nearby Madison, Alabama. Never before has a Rotary International president spent 65 consecutive days in his own bed, consecutive nights in his own bed. I'm setting a record. Well, you've certainly set quite a few records and, and you've done many things that have not been done before. One of those coming up that I'm sure everybody on this call is very much looking forward to is that virtual convention kicking off on June 20th. Everybody can remember to get more information uh, on that at riconvention.org. And Mark, uh, on behalf of Rotary District 6460, District Governor Mark, and all 100 of us who are here, uh, we would like to thank you very much sincerely for your time this evening. And also the balloons in your background are reminding me that uh, I believe that you had a birthday in the last week or so. So everybody in the district would like to wish you a happy belated birthday as well. Thank you. Well, of course, see, that's the problem. Since we're here social distancing, I can't show off my balloons to anybody. So I put them in the background here so that I can share them on the various Zoom calls. But yes, uh, last Thursday was my 65th birthday. Well, happy birthday again, and uh, thank you so much for joining us. Glad to do it, Ryan. Governor Mark, good to see you. Rod, thanks for the invitation. Keith Lape, I see you there on my screen, and, and Suzanne, and Brian, and oh, Dave, I see you. There's all sorts of people, and probably some people I should know, but anyway, I'm going through the pages. It's great to see you all. Thanks very much for uh, hosting me this evening. It's been our pleasure. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, and that was Rotary International President Mark Maloney. Uh, what an opportunity and what an exciting uh, opportunity really for all of us. Not everybody on this call may have been able to go to Hawaii, but the Rotary International Convention is going to be coming to you uh, in your own home in just one month's time, 30 days from today. So be sure to keep an eye out for more details on that. Uh, for those of you who are still with us on the call, um, we do have a handful of things to discuss. If you've not been on one of our district meetings before, uh, we do like to make sure that everybody can give a little bit of an update about some district programs. Uh, and we will be doing that. We will start by a gentleman who is trying to get my attention right now. And that is PDG, Rod Buffington. Rod, what do you got for us today? 
I just wanted to thank everybody that was on the uh, program tonight. And I see we had almost 100 people or more here. And that's an outstanding thank you to all of you that joined. Thank you very much. And thank you again. I said it at the beginning, but again, thank you very much, Rod, for setting it up. And we had 98 accounts connected, but some of those accounts have multiple people on them, husbands and wives and others who are sheltering in place together. So we broke that 100 number. <laughs> Am I still on? I yep. might mention the baseball program at this point. Uh, I don't think we will have the game on July 25th. It has not been called. I still have 1,750 tickets on my desk. And what we are planning to do, Maura and uh, Bill and I, and who else was on, Ryan? Uh, we had a meeting, we're going to have another one. And we're thinking about ways that we can raise some money for literacy on July 25th if we don't go to the ball game. So keep tuned into that, okay? Yes, we will absolutely be planning that, uh, the governor line in addition to Rod. Um, and again, stay tuned for more details on our revised literacy fundraiser for the year. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to make sure that I mentioned while we had everybody on the line, and I mentioned this last week, but some folks weren't here last week, our Rotary District scholarships are still available. Uh, and if you would like, you can go to our website, rotarydistrict6460.org. The applications for those scholarships are due on May 31st, so the end of this year, or I'm sorry, the end of this month. And they are for college students, undergraduate students, who have completed uh, a specified number of credit hours. Typically, they would be in their sophomore year. Uh, and they're fairly generous scholarships that are available to students who are either attending a school in Rotary District 6460 uh, or, alternatively, are from, resident, from District 6460. They're residents of the district. So again, head over to the district website uh, in order to take a look at those. Also, if again, if anybody has anything they want to contribute to the good of the cause, they want to say to the district, feel free to either drop me a message or raise your hand virtually and I can get you on the line. Uh, while we do that, we heard from them a little bit earlier, but it is Rotary protocol and tradition to at the very least uh, check in with our district governor and see how Mark Roberts is doing. Mark, you have any thoughts for folks tonight? Yeah, just very quickly. This is the, the coolest thing to have over 100 of our Rotarians together to, to see the international uh, president. A lot of you have heard me say that, you know, I had the chance to visit 48 of our 49 clubs in, in person before things shut down. And that was hands down the best part of the district governor job. But the second best part has been able to see our clubs come together uh, electronically on Zoom and, and similar platforms. And so just a big shout out to everybody for doing such a great job of keeping connected. And Mark just made the point that it is really job one for us right now to keep connected, not let our members just sort of float away because we're not together. And then secondarily, what can we do to continue to serve our communities? Because man, our communities need us more than ever right now. And it's up to us to figure out how to serve. So. Just, you know, thank you for everything that you continue to do. If I can do anything to help you get connected to an electronic meeting or just anything at all, I'm still on the job for about five, six more weeks. So just reach out to me and I'm glad to help. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Mark. And I can vouch for the fact that when he says he is willing to do anything to help you guys out, those are not empty words. He absolutely means it. Uh, and I've seen that just by virtue of the number of uh, online meetings that I've seen Mark popping onto and off of as I'm following him on Facebook. You know, a lot of folks who are in their governor year, not to cast aspersions, but this last month or two uh, is, is in some respects the downhill slope. Uh, but Mark has really been working hard to finish just as strong as he started the year. Uh, other folks have their hands up and want to talk to the district. And one of them is our District Youth Exchange Chair, Tiffany Wormowski. Tiffany, how are we doing tonight? Hi, everybody. I'm so glad to see you all here. Um, I'm on my phone, so I don't have as good of a view of everybody as I normally do, but I know Zane and Sabrina are here, and I'm so glad that our Youth Exchange students are so involved. Um, I saw several members of the Youth Exchange Committee for our district on as well. 
Um, I just wanted to give everybody a quick update as we announced before, um, we are not, we are suspending our program for the 2021 year. Um, RI hasn't decided whether or not to do that. Central States hasn't yet decided whether or not to do that, but our district did. So um, we will not be sending anybody out or um, taking any inbound students for that exchange year. But the, um, the deadlines and things for the next year are still coming right up. And so we need um, clubs to um, commit to host uh, for the next year. And also we're looking for outbound students, clubs to sponsor outbound students and to help recruit them. So um, we're, we're taking a year off kind of, but there's still so much to do already for the next year um, that I don't want people to um, relax yet. So um, if you have any questions about hosting or sponsoring, please let me know. Um, I so appreciate Mark um, amazing support of the youth exchange program and all of the district uh, the D line has you guys are all just our biggest cheerleaders and I just couldn't be more grateful for for all of you and thanks to my committee for such uh, hard work um, and uh, yeah so keep youth exchange in your minds even though we're taking a year off we are not resting thanks Thank you, Tiffany. And I will say too, uh, again, and I've said it before on these calls and I, I can't say it enough, thanks to everybody who's on that committee, Tiffany especially, uh, for all the work that they do in terms of assembling the program uh, with so many people. I probably can't see everybody who's on, but I, I, several committee members are here. Harold Waters is here, Barb Mullaney is here, uh, Beth Allen I think I saw earlier. So they're here and they're still working hard to make sure that we can do a strong relaunch of this program in 21-22. And I will say as well, that's something that I've got some personal investment in because that will be uh, my year as district governor. So I would like to see the program brought back in a big way as well. So uh, in addition to calling on Tiffany, if you've got any questions, uh, I want to be as big of a facilitator as that as I can. So do call on me too, Tiffany and I'll tag team it. And frankly, uh, you know, I might just start making some calls and asking some people where their heads and their hearts are for hosting in 2122. I'm not, uh, I'm not above that. Uh, another person who's got their hand up right now wears many hats for the district. Uh, currently, our district secretary, also our district Ryla chair, and I am trying to unmute her right now. That is. Kathy Jo Littleton Wall. Kathy, what do you got for us? Well, I have two quick topics. It's so good to see everybody. I, I don't want to start naming names, but because I just love all of you. Um, I'm on the youth topic. I hope and hope and hope that we have Ryla. And thank you, Zane, for, for next year, a year from now. Uh, thank you, Zane, for asking that question. Um, and I let the district know that Zane's going to be uh, very instrumental in Ryla next year. I I announced that to him on a Zoom call a few weeks ago. So we're gonna, we're really gonna uh, let the youngsters ha have their head, as they say, uh, with Sydney Hembro from our club and Zane taking major roles with Ryla. And I'm really excited about that. I was very excited to hear Mark talk about making connections, and I just wanted to share with everybody what we call in Jacksonville the connection pro project. It was really pretty simple. We took our directory and we got a core group of volunteers from our membership committee and we divided our rotary directory up so that each membership committee member had about oh eight or ten people on their list and a star of that little group is uh phyllis lape phyllis writes lovely emails because I'm in her small group, so I know that. So what the, the committee member does is they either call or text or email or whatever connection they wanna make, whatever everybody's comfortable with, they make with their small group. Sometimes I send goofy pictures of Hannah and I doing goofy things to the whole group. Sometimes it's an individual phone call or a text or an email, but that way we are, we are hitting everybody in our club. Um, some people aren't responding some people are and we're just getting ready to go into phase two that mark sort of alluded to as well we're going to look at who um who attends our facebook parties on fridays and who doesn't and we're going to make another kind of another uh i guess connection project uh revamp so that's that's coming soon within the next three or four days just wanted to share some ideas. I'm sure y'all are doing great things as well. 
Thank you. Yes, thank you very much for that, Kathy. And like uh, Mark said, one of the important things to ask yourself is who are the people who are not showing up in that participant list on your Zoom meetings? Uh, and what can you do to reach to them? Uh, I am also, don't forget, again, if anybody else would like to say anything for the good of the cause, shoot me a message, raise your hand. Uh, while we see if anybody else is going to do that, let's check in uh, with another person who I know has been very busy as of late, and that's our district governor-elect, Maura Donnelly from Highland. Maura, what's going on? Oh, just zooming away with Mark. I've been on several with him this week. I just want to say to everybody, I'm really impressed with the service and fundraising efforts that have been going on. Um, I'm more than willing to try to attend any Zoom meetings to get ideas from the clubs and share them with the other clubs as much as I can. So if you'd like me to join in, please send me an email with the Zoom information and I'll see if I'm available. Uh, so far, I think I've been on probably three this week with Mr. Mark Roberts. So um, he's gotten good at uh, having lined back up with another one. So he has to leave early at most of the ones, but I stayed till the end and it's been very exciting. You guys have been very creative and it's it's been a, a pleasure to be included in those so please keep sending me the invites okay very good yes mark and maura they make an excellent tag team and they can tag in and out of your zoom meetings as time permits for both of them and they're even wearing the matching shirts tonight look at that beautiful uh, and I don't know if they still have those but those shirts are the shirts that were going to be sold by the host organization committee mm -hmm. Uh, for the Rotary International Convention that had to have, of course, been canceled. Uh, and you can actually still find those online uh, if you're looking for them. Uh, and I had a URL for that at one point. Uh, here it is. It's actually 2020hawaiishirts.com. If you go to 2020hawaiishirts.com, you can buy one of those lovely shirts that Mark and Mara are wearing for only $35. And I see they've actually got rotary face masks on sale there now as well. And that actually is going to help the folks who were helping to host the Rotary International Convention defray some of their costs. So also, uh, we got another person who's very important to our district who would like to check in with all of you. And that is immediate past district governor and current Rotary District Foundation Chair, Brian Barstead. I have unmuted Brian. Brian, how we doing? I feel unmuted and I appreciate that. Hey, um, wanted to show you what a great COVID hair st style looks like. From the side, from the front it looks okay, but from the side it's kind of like a mohawk slash, uh, um, it's, it's not working out. I need a haircut, so I'm glad we're getting close to opening up. Uh, last year when I was governor, I made a bold uh, challenge to the district. I said if anybody, if we could get everybody in the district to contribute at least uh, some money to the annual fund, I was going to shave my head. And I didn't realize I was a year early in that. So I still may do that. But um, I wanted to give you an update on how we're doing with uh, annual giving. Uh, we're getting into the home stretch of the year. And uh, we have basically little over five weeks left. Uh, as of uh, a glance I just had uh, at, the, at the data, we, the district has contributed about $135,315 to the foundation. Uh, we have all but six clubs that have contributed, contributed something. Last year we had five clubs that didn't contribute, so we're, we're, we've got a pretty good representation of clubs. We're about 85% um, of our goal for the year. Our goal was to have an average uh, Rotarian give at least $100 to the foundation. This year, right now, the average person has given $65 to the annual fund. So we got a little time and we hope that uh, people will be generous as we get close to the end of the year. Just to remind you, the annual fund is the fund that drives our uh, resources for the district scholarships that we do each year and also drives our resources for the annual uh, district grants program. So the money that goes in this year will stay with Rotary International. It comes, part of it comes back to our district and that's what funds those programs. So if we don't have money this year, we won't have money in three years to do that. Uh, where we're at with polio right now from the district is we, uh, 
We've given a total of $29,381. And uh, today we pledged an additional 18,000 from the district's uh, leftover district designated funds from previous years. The district designated funds get matched one for one by the Rotary World Fund. And that also gets matched two for one for from uh, the Rotary, uh, uh, from the Gates Foundation. So that represents from our district um, somewhere around two, close to $200,000 when you combine all those things that we are giving to the polio program. And I think all of us in West Central Illinois should be very proud of that. Um, I would appreciate any contributions you can make. And as I uh, have been to several, oh, mullet, that was, yeah, Bill Durrell, you're right. That, I couldn't come up with that, but you're right. It is a kind of a mullet thing going on. I think mullets are coming back. Uh, Bill just made that comment to me, Bill. You're a wonderful man, Pike County. Um, I am going to join the Pike County meeting next week. And if there's any other clubs that would like me to pop in and do a little five minute how your club is doing with foundation giving, uh, I've done that now for a few clubs and it's a lot of fun. And I'm happy to do that from the comfort of my couch. So thanks for every, everything you guys are doing this year. Peace. And uh, let's continue to connect the world you know it's called a mullet it's also referred to as business in the front and party in the back and if that doesn't describe <laughs> brian barstead i don't know what does uh, <laughs> on that note uh, i am not seeing anybody else who is raising their hand or waving at me except for rod rod's waving again rod i'd, I'd like to recognize somebody that's on this program <clears throat> He's been a Rotarian in this district for a long, long time. And that's Richard Hatwick. He's on from Florida. And I'm very pleased to see his name on our list tonight. He was governor 2000-2001. Yes, it is good to see Richard here as well. And uh, we've got all kinds of names uh, from all over the place, some of whom it's been a while since I've seen you. And it's always excellent to uh, connect and see these folks from all over, whether it's Florida or Brazil or even Pike County. Uh, I, I, you know, I used to be in Pike County about once a week for work, it seemed like, and gosh, I've not been there in months. One of these days, I'll get back to Pittsfield and that courthouse. All right, so folks, uh, keep in mind too that our plan for the foreseeable future, while we are all staying at home to the best of our ability, is going to be to keep doing these meetings on a bi-weekly basis. So if that plan holds, our next meeting of Rotary District 6460 would be Wednesday, June 3rd at 7 o'clock. Uh, we are looking for, I am looking for, uh, a speaker for that. And if anybody else has any ideas on who you think should be talking to the district for an extended time, it's going to be difficult to beat out Mark Maloney, but we can certainly give it a shot. Uh, and, you know, we heard at our last meeting too, some great stuff from the volunteer surge folks. So unless there is anything else for the good of the cause, I will officially adjourn this meeting of Rotary District 6460. I'm a little bit ashamed of myself because I forgot to do it at the front, but I'll bring it out at the end to adjourn us. I was a little nervous because Mark was here. I've got my bell and this meeting is adjourned. Good night, everybody. <laughs>